And as we work towards completing the, the engine, I wanted to touch on a few things here. One is the Vias solenoid, so let me get a little closer to it. To the two locations where I'll be installing these solenoids. One, obviously, is the left one, and the other one is the right one. They're actually different part numbers, but you have to be pretty attentive to notice that. So you'll notice here you have a spot for the bolt to go through, then you have the, the wiring connector at the bottom. You can hypothetically install any one of them in any location. Uh oh. What did I do? Should have inserted that before before putting it back together. Anyway, hypothetically, you can install any of these in any location. However, and they're the same length and everything, yeah. So, well, is one shorter? Nope. I'm kind of in trouble here. I'll figure out what to do. Yeah, that wasn't a smart move on my part. Probably have to scrape that and take it off. So, learn from me. Did not do that last. Do this way earlier in the process. I thought I had space should have done it earlier so but one thing I wanted to tell you and how to recognize or identify what goes where you have an oh uh, no you have a 9 and a 10 don't really mean much to me this is what I would say see these gaps you have three on one side you have one on the other side the three should be facing inwards towards the engine this way Likewise, you have three on this side, one, two, three, and filters in between. The three should be facing inwards. So this way, you will know what way to, to take them. So let me set this down while I install this and contemplate the situation I put myself in over here. I already cleaned that up. I know everything's good. Since there's an O-ring, I will lube it up. A little bit up just a little bit to enable easier insertion into the hole okay. I'm guessing I should have lubed the whole thing then huh why is it so tough makes me look forward to when I have to make things work over here <laughs> In all honesty, I think engine oil might be better in this case because it's going into an engine oil system. But so far, so good. It's working. Just keep twisting it. Careful, don't break the connector here. But if you do break one, hit me up. I might have an extra one for you. Okay, so. Nice, I like that sound. It's a sound of progress. I need to twist it a little bit to get it properly aligned so I can drive the bolt without cross-threading anything. Yeah, it's pretty tight. That's not going to go in. So what I'll have to do is take the entire thing out and then, re you know, scrape it, do all the good jazz and Install it first, then redo the whole thing. So that was definitely an oversight on my part. See, on the on the other intake manifold, or rather on the other intake manifold design, the 03, 04, M45, because you don't have this huge, because you don't have the front um, throttle body, you don't have to have this offset to the left, or rather to the right. So that means you have a little more clearance over there. So again, a regrettable decision on my part but it's fairly easy to fix no point in trying to dam in damaging everything else trying to fix this so what I'm gonna do is you've seen me remove this cover before so that's what I'm gonna do remove the cover and I was so proud of my job and I'll tell you I was generous 
for the RTV here. Oh yeah. Well now I've got to pull in the way. Yeah, definitely. Didn't do myself any justice here. Let me do this. Let me skip that for now. I don't want to fill up my memory card with filler material. I'll do the other things that I wanted to do while I was here. So. Pulleys. That was one thing I wanted to do. By the way, since this side is pretty much done and ready, let me just go ahead and install the the sensors. Okay, now these are both top corner sensors. Yeah, say so that's pretty much ready. But once again. Vaseline, just a little bit. That's the VTC sensor, bank one. Now, if I can find where I lost that, this is not the correct one. Remember, we've talked about shapes so many times. This one will not work there. And I do have the reason right here. Your tube. So let's install the dipstick tube. Can we see the bottom hole here? This one here. Okay, so. Gasoline. Maybe it's a little too late in the project, but should start referring to it as assembly lube. <laughs> Give it some respect. Let me remove the dipstick first. Pull it, pull it back. Then just do this. Insert that. I'm standing up to get a little more oomph. And that's it. Just push it in. Then rotate this thing. Then rotate this. We need to remove that. And what am I doing? Okay. Okay, so here, this is just a placeholder because I misplaced the sensor that goes here. Not to worry, I am pretty sure I can find another sensor rather fast. So yeah, there are enough sensors in this garage. I'll get, I'll get something later. For now, what we need to do is focus back on the idler pulley. Did you ever notice here there's an error? Let's let's look inside here. There's an error that tells you what side is up. Well, just find it pretty cool when I was working on it when I was cleaning it and replacing the bearings on it. So well, how nice of you guys.
you want to be careful with all these. You don't want to end up over tightening and breaking something, breaking the mounting point in the oil pan. You know, nothing too crazy. That says new bearing. I put new bearings in there, and since I have a bucket full of full of these things, I wanted to be able to easily identify what what was going on. So there you go. This one's got a new bearing. This one does too. That one does as well. And then there are my spare. That's better. I've redone this, reapplied the RTV gasket maker, so I'll just let it sit there curing and I just tighten that, otherwise it was already on there. So I'll get this because it is time that it goes home. You know, whenever you see again these codes, one of the first things we usually say is check, you know, pull the sensor. Make sure it doesn't have any dirt or grime on it. Then sometimes you have to look in there to make sure that the, the signal plate does not have any junk or grime on it either. Then what I usually do is switch them around, see if the code changes, anything like that. But for now, this is good. Just wanted to wipe it. My, my policy on these sensors is this. I don't replace sensors unless they need to be replaced. I don't want to, for one, I'm not going to buy a non-OEM sensor because then you cause the potential of something failing. Uh, two, nice. two um, I just keep spares and my, my, my line of thinking is usually this. If it was working in the engine that I, that I pulled out, then it is almost guaranteed to keep working here. The only thing I usually do, well, I guess I'm in a fortunate position because I have quite a lot of these spares, so I can usually do the dance, you know, take this one out, put another one in, in the in the line of troubleshooting. But otherwise, I just don't replace sensors for the sake of it. Except that one, I kind of play an interesting mindset. I have an interesting um, philosophy on it. It's going to fail. The camshaft sensor for these engines, they're definitely going to fail. So you can replace it proactively or you could just have a spare and wait for it. The thing is when it dies, it rarely ever just dies once. It's more of a little by little dying, causing trouble starting and all that. Anyway, that's, that's good for now. Let's keep trucking with these changes. This one here is the power steering reservoir bracket. I'm going to install it. It's actually a nice location. Um, I hate that or that I really don't particularly like that it's on the timing cover. However, I think this is an interesting place to have a supporting member whenever you want to do um, engine lifts. You know, if you have another corner here, it will help you stabilize the whole thing. does not need to be excessively tight. The, the reservoir is not spinning or t 
turning anywhere, so it's just sitting there. We're doing well. I'm well aware that I have not yet tightened the pulley here. You know, fully tight that is. But we'll we'll get to it. Not to worry. We're getting to a pretty good place with this engine. And let me turn this. Next, I want to work on the on the starter. Can you see the starter down there on the floor? Maybe, maybe not. Well, I'll install that in, in short order. Making sure that the teeth face in, inside. It wouldn't really mount any other way, but I suppose it's worth mentioning. Not 12s, they're 14s. Okay, the engine is ready to be taken off the engine stand now. This time I mean it, I know I've said it for the past <laughs> couple of intros, but we are pretty much done with everything we need to do. All, most of the front accessories, at least anything that I have access to, has been bolted on. So that is accessory pulleys, the water pump, that's about it. The AC compressor is going to be in the car. The power steering pump is going to be in the car. Alternator. I need to get the alternator. I'm sure I can install the alternator right now.